taking you inside the Wolf's Den. Brought to you by Little General Stores. Welcome back to Mountaineer Game Day and inside the Wolf's Den. I'm Wolf Man. The Kansas Jayhawks, Gold Rush, Homecoming, Varsity Club Weekend, you name it, it's happening this weekend at 12 noon. Let's get into the breakdown. Roll it, KB. So now let's take a look at Kansas quarterback Carter Stanley. Last week was his first start of the season. He came in against Oklahoma State. He had a pretty nice day. He was 24-32, 247 yards, and three touchdowns with zero picks. Actually, with they've had three quarterbacks this season without any interceptions, and they've only had two lost fumbles. That is unbelievable, unheard of. Three quarterbacks and no picks for the whole year at this time of the season? Let's take a look at him. Again, nice day for him. Go ahead, roll a KB. Carter Stanley, he's got a nice release. He can move around the pocket. He goes up and throws this. We just talked about Steven Sims here and what he's doing. He got a two to one pass to run ratio. That's pass to run ratio for two to one. But again, when you throw in those 15 screens that they, they do, that's kind of part of the running game in my mind, but it's officially recorded as a pass. But, so that skews the numbers a little bit. But again, they're throwing the ball all the time. So once again, let's take a look at Puka because what they're trying to do is move him around anywhere he has to be. He's right here. Again, he's got 60 attempts, 474 yards, 118 yards per game, and four rushing touchdowns. But they're going to put him here in this diamond-shaped backfield formation. They're going to put him here so these guys will be lead blockers. Now, check this out, okay? Because these guys here are going, this is lead zone opposite. Okay, watch the whole offensive line is going to go this way, and these two blockers are going to go that way, and he's going to run that way. It's a different play, different concept. Roll it, KB. Doug Meacham. Doing his best at Kansas. Go get roll it back one more time. I want you to see his offensive line come right here. Go ahead, slow, yeah. All coming here, leading out here. That's a nice looking play, and that's a quick young man. So, one last thing on Puka Williams. Right here, I, I told you, they like to move him around, get the ball in his hands. It doesn't matter. He could be in the, the tailback running between the tackles. He can be, as we saw in the last one, in the diamond formation, or he could be the number one receiver out here and be running a screen. Ball's in open space. They want to get him in open space. So that's where he can be really effective. Roll it, KB. Coming out, doing the old slip screen right here. You can see him running. Running, he's tough, puts his shoulders down. Last week against Oklahoma State, he had six catches, 60 yards. Hey, that's pretty big, and that's the first time that they've actually really tried to throw it to him all year. So now, let's break down this Kansas Jayhawk defense. Total defense, 380 yards per game, averaging. They're 68th in the country, and they're 6th in the Big 12 Conference. Rushing defense, they're giving up 177 yards. That's 91st in the country, and that's 10th in the Big 12. And passing defense, they're at 202 yards, 49th in the country, and they're 2nd in the Big 12. You know, sometimes those numbers can be skewed a little bit, though, because this number here is a little bit lower and doing better in the, in the nation because this number's really high. So why would you pass it? when he can run it. I think WBU's gonna have to really run a lot this game against the Jayhawks. Let's go roll it, KB. Let's take a look. Again, they're up here, they're in a 3-4 defensive structure. Just getting gashed right there, as you can see. That was a cover three. They've actually played a different bunch of different coverages this year, a little different. Now, 3-4 defensive structure, I told you about that. The odd defensive front. That's a three-man front. You have right here a four eye into the boundary, a zero technique nose, and a five technique to the field. Okay, you got number 29, the middle linebacker here. This is what I call a 5-1 box. You can see here the two outside backers here, right there and there. So, Joe Deneen, number 29. He was a second team All-American last year, and right now he's leading the Big 12 with 63 tackles. I don't know, I mean, they give him a tackle if he just even gets near a running back. I don't get it, but that's a lot of tackles. But he still is a pretty good player. Watch out for Joe Deneen, number 29. So I was telling you about this defense and the run and being 10th in the Big 12. And this is what we have is a 5-1 box, cover four. This is a third and short situation, but I just want you to see this because cover four, the safeties are coming up. I'm going to show you that a little bit later, how they react. But again, if you break through this anywhere through this line, find a gap, there's not a lot going on here. Roll it, KB. Check it out, cover four, they're coming up to support. And again, this is where Kansas is having its issues and why I think WVU's going to want to run the ball a lot. I think it's a big day for the running backs at WVU because we can just break through that first front and get up to the second level. There's a, it's a lot easier than, uh, again, trying to go against that five-man front. Hey, y'all. It's me. 
Wolfman's cousin. Cousin Jack. Yeah, that's right. Wolfman Jack. You know, a couple weeks ago, a bunch of crazy wildcats came around here in Morgantown and Wolfman asked me to take care of them. You know what I'm saying? You did? Yeah, well, we took care of them and now we got another Kansas team. Kansas Jayhawks. Well, I went out there for a real full hunt. Comes to find out, it's a fictitious bird. What? I can't dig that. Fictitious bird, I'm going out for a hunt. I'm gonna go out and do that, take these down. Well, I'll tell you what. Kansas Jayhawks. Fictitious birds or not are coming to town. And the W Mountaineers, ranked eighth in the country. They have to be ready for them. Because you know what? These big crazy Kansas Jay birds, you have no idea what they're going to do. They're much improved. So you know what? I'm going to go out there. And even though it's a fictitious bird, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to get them. I'm gonna get, you dig that? That's right. Because the Mountaineers are going to be ready to go. They're not going to overlook the Kansas Jayhawks. Let me tell you something. It's going to be. Dig that. I do.